All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the Asian session. Um, I wanted to, unlike a certain Vinny E. Mini, uh, I will show you a trade that starts off in drawdown and see if it turns around. Uh, is that right, Vinny? You don't really like to start your live streams uh, with a showing a, a position that is currently in, a, in an unrealized loss, right? You don't like to do that, in my opinion, right? You kind of always like to, you know, hint that Algo, Algo Box doesn't doesn't take losses, isn't that right, Vinny? Isn't that not true? I don't know. It's just my opinion, and it's my opinion that you're a crackpot. So I wanted to, you know, I was gonna, I was going to. So now the market's making you think that it's heavy, right? Let's see if that's real. Let's see if it's really drawing back down into our busy here. Stop loss is slightly suboptimal. I'm going to put it right there. All right. So, we're holding this position in drawdown.
All right. So, we're coming below the balance price range. We're drawing down into this uh, SIBI here. I think my stop loss is suboptimal, and here's why. I'm going to make sure that's at least below the 50% of that. This price could come down, draw into the SIBI, and then find support and rally. So, 329.75. What is price reaching for right now? Uh, it is probably going to reach into this SIBI. I'm probably going to have to either call this trade a loss and, and move from there, uh, or I will have to add on another contract and cost average down, which I'm really not uh, wanting to do that. Um, this stop loss is suboptimal as it is in an inefficiency I have to bring it down for that reason not because I'm trying to uh, take revenge on the market or something like that so before I add on a third contract and cost average down uh, I'm not gonna do that yet uh, what I am gonna say is the stop loss had to come down because it, this is an inefficient, inefficiently delivered price here between the prices of 325 three quarters and that low there of 333 halves. I am trying to use this as a bullish breaker, so that would be a low, high, lower, low. 
it's not uh, an ideal breaker um, as we didn't really sweep into a lot of liquidity here so it's not um, an ideal breaker now using advanced breaker theory and taking our standard deviations higher that would take us here into buy side liquidity so I have reason to believe that regardless of what we're seeing right now I think that price is going to want to draw back up into this buy side liquidity that's my current thinking why uh, well this is a balanced price range and I thought that you know price would find support there at the midpoint of that obviously it has not done that so if it has not found support here at the balanced price range then we're probably coming down to this busy here we're probably coming all the way down so I don't want to add on a third contract if I think the price is coming down further um, and plus I want to take this account pretty light I have a three thousand um, dollar drawdown so you know I could take six times right now the current loss uh, which I don't want to do that but uh, you know two contracts here is pretty reasonable we're, we're currently sitting at a 10 point drawdown um, which is not ideal it's 40 ticks okay 40 ticks so it's not ideal right now um, but what I am trying to demonstrate to you number one is you'll notice I, I'm not piling on right now in my top step step two account which is a grandfathered account um, so I am still step two even though they move to that the one step model uh, I am eighteen hundred dollars away from being funded I am eighteen hundred and thirty six dollars and forty four cents from being funded and so it's not really in my interest right now to really load on the contracts I have available to me right now fifteen contracts uh, but it's why would I do that I don't you know I would I would rather take a loss here right now I don't like seeing the market move this much against me but I would rather see uh, take a loss now and try and grind it back than I would make it too much worse price is always reaching for something okay whenever you see the market a uh, reprice meaning move somewhere uh, it has an objective in mind even on the smallest time frames and that objective should be inefficiency uh, or liquidity you know with some degree of you know margin of error but uh, even on the smallest time frames you can see just below that balance price range uh, there would be sell side liquidity there whatever however small it is it is there the balance price range here so we have a SIBI here and a BISI right across from it that is a strong area of support well not really area but like the 50 percent of that should be a very strong support but we did trade below that you know a good example of the 50 percent of the balance price range would be right there okay we see that and then spooling higher this right here right where price spools higher into buy side liquidity after you know forming a balance price range and then retracing into it that is really the action that I want to see happen I want to see it in this balance price range now I thought it was going to do it right here you can see the price considered spooling higher right there but it, it's drawing down into our SIBI down here or sorry BISI buy side imbalance sell side inefficiency right there it is drawing there if you hear me say draw or reach they mean the same thing price is drawing somewhere it's like being tugged it's drawn to something it's reaching for something it mean the same thing draw on liquidity the key to ICT trading is not the PD erase it's the draw on liquidity
Looks like we're about to form another balanced price range here. Um, if we can get up to this high, that would be a balanced price range. We've got a SIBI and a BISI uh, across from one another. So what does it mean when price spools? It kind of looks like this right here. It starts spooling higher. Spooling meaning that any attempt to go down is, is rapidly repriced higher. And no amount of selling stops it from repricing higher. Check out the micro Russell. something there on the micro Russell huh that's a Judas swing uh, look at that Wow turtle soup turtle soup <laughs> turtle soup turtle soup just clear out both sides of the book huh Oh, look at that regular trading hours gap support there. Wow. Came in, ironed out that regular trading hours gap, and then cleared out the buy side liquidity. Wow. Look at the micro Russell just clearing out both sides of the book. That's savage. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful price action there, really. This is going to be the last contract. Okay, we're. Uh, no, that's not what I meant to do.
I'm just doing some math here. That's it. That's funding right there. That's getting to express funded. That uh, you're wondering what that is. I have to do some math on that. That should be funding right there. I believe. Maybe the commissions. It's not quite there. Uh, I'm actually gonna go up two more, two more ticks. Make sure that that it's there. Right there. That should be a little bit over funding limit right there. That's the profit target right there. So I want to outline the trade for you. Um, as you know, this YouTube channel is my video journal into professional day trading. I am trying to trade for a company called Top Step, become a 1099 contractor. Ultimately, I obviously, you know, I want to trade my own trade station account, um, but I don't have the capital to do that, not properly. So uh, the capital that I would need to trade my trade station account properly, if I wanted to trade the micro NASDAQ, I would say I want comfortably $10,000. Yeah. So on TradeStation, you have um, intraday, so day trading margins, and you have uh, end of day or overnight margins. And so you get, you get a deep discount. I think it's one-fourth. Um, it's one fourth, yeah, yeah, it's one fourth. So, on your trade station account, I think the micro NASDAQ to trade one contract, the micro NASDAQ, not the full size one, uh, is sixteen hundred and eighty dollars. So, I'd realistically want to be able to put on about three or four micro NASDAQs on my cash account. So in order to do that, do some quick math. Just do some quick math. See like what the minimum would be. Yeah, so I'm looking at about 
needing $8,500 to do that on TradeStation so I can trade the micro NASDAQ. So let's say that this were the micro NASDAQ, with this, which is a one-tenth product. Um, okay, so this would be 345 spot. Yeah, so let's, let's just do some quick math. Three forty-five, twenty-five. Okay, that's thirty-two and a half points. Um, let's say that that's times two. So this same position, if it were on the micro Nasdaq, would be worth a hundred and ninety-three dollars and fifty cents. Okay, that were on the mic, the MNQ the same three contract positions. So in order for me to do this on TradeStation, I believe, yeah, I would need a little bit more than $5,000. Uh, yeah, like $5,200, I think, to do this on TradeStation, on the micro, uh, which I can get there, I think, in a couple, maybe in a couple months, you know? Um, I've got some bills to pay if I can get through top step uh, that have to come first, but then after that, work on. Uh, I'm really, you know, want to stick with the Nasdaq. I think professionally, uh, I can I can trade the micro Russell as well on my trade station account. So, you know, but that being said, you can look at the micro Russell and you can see, you know, in overnight it has these uh, periods of illiquidity. You know, it's got holes in the chart. It's it's not very attractive. So I'll show you the M and Q U. Okay, so you see, it's just the one tenth product. I'll leave that up there for kind of. Uh, hopefulness in the future. So uh, I use TradeStation for my live brokerage account. Um, super low commissions, by the way, like super low. So you pay almost nothing. So yeah, this same position on a micro NASDAQ would be worth $193.50 if we can hit. So that would be a pretty good day's wage. You know, you're trading this and then you trade the same trade on your cash account or your, on your trade station account. That would be pretty good. $193? Not bad at all. So uh, my objective with my day trading right now is to use Top Step to fund myself and uh, the brokerage account that I use that I don't have enough money for right now but want to get back up to having enough money is uh, TradeStation. TradeStation is a good, uh, in my opinion, reputable broker. So TradeStation, super low commissions. And so, you know, doing some quick math here on the micro, micro Russell, you know, that would be $193.50 on the micro minus commissions. That would be about $191. And that would be a pretty good couple of hours on a cash account. And uh, that's kind of the objective is to trade top step and trade my own cash brokerage account and have enough money you know have enough capital fund my own fund my own brokerage account uh, via top step for sure and I probably want to stick with the the NASDAQ and just on my trade station account stick with the micro and if I trade my trade station account uh, I will show you all that as well for sure. I'm not 
going to trade any other funding companies, but if I trade my own brokerage account, I will show uh, I will show that on this channel as well. Um, all right, so what are we looking at right now? We're probably looking at coming down to 341 quarters right here. I'm going to say 341 quarters and then maybe spool higher. Why are we long right now? Because I believe that the NASDAQ right now uh, should go spool higher, go attack this buy side liquidity. You know, looking at our advanced, looking at our low, our high to lower low that kind of came into liquidity here. Now we did form equal lows here and that's a little bit disconcerting. So we're building up some sell side liquidity, but I'm not sure which one is the stronger draw buy side up here, sell side down here. That being said, you'll notice I got a pretty wide stop loss right now because I think this thing could come all the way back down to 332 evens and then spool higher. Um, there should be significant liquidity above our AM session and is this London session? Yeah, and our London session high is up here and our New York AM session high is up here and so at some point our price tonight uh, will likely want to drop into these two liquidity targets up here. I, you know, that's what I think is going to happen uh, using two different models here. So just looking at where our liquidity is and then looking at our uh, breaker block theory plus standard deviations. Also looking at our balance price range here that we just made, right? We have a SIBI and a BISI right from across each other. Uh, looking at the 50% of that, that is 341 quarters. That is where I think the price should find support if it's not going to break these equal lows. Looking at our contra position draw on liquidity, because we need to, even when we're in a trade, we got to know what the what a contra draw should be. So a contra draw would be down into this BISI and into this lower order block where my stop is. Okay, that's the contra draw, 10 minute BISI here. Could come in and want to fill that. So there is some sell side argument here as well. Yeah, my basic game plan is get my bills paid and any other money that I have coming in from Top Step, it's going right to my trade station account. And then trade trade tra uh, Top Step and trade trade station. When I'm trading uh, my trade station account, I'll have to be on the micro product for sure. You know, trade stations intraday margins are great. Their overnight margins are less great. So the thing about when you're trading your own cash brokerage account as, as opposed to trading um, like a top set is obviously you can hold positions on as long as you want, as long as you have enough money for it. So you can hold positions past the day because it's your own freaking money, as long as you have the margin. So there's sometimes advantages to doing that. Sometimes what you see in the New York PM session coming into the close will continue on into the next few hours. And, and if you're trading your own cash, there might be a financial reason for you to, or a, a price reason, a draw on liquidity reason for you to just want to go ahead and hold it longer, hold it over the PM session into resettlement. That's not always the case. So it's really the only drawback with uh, Top Step, and I under totally understand why, uh, but obviously you are limited to one day. It is, it is pure day trading. Uh, when you're trading your own brokerage account, you know, you can hold it if you have the cash. So if you're trading a trade station account or if you're trading an account that has uh, intraday and overnight margins, like basic risk management would be only to trade overnight margins even during intraday. That would be limiting your risk by a lot. And that way they're not going to, you know, shut you down and charge you $75 like I've been charged multiple times because I'm an idiot because uh, you accidentally hold things too long. They're not going to shut you down and margin call you. Uh, and being margin called sucks a lot. So you want to avoid that. Uh, you want to avoid that. So. 
Okay, we're coming into uh, what I think we should find support on. I would like to see support found here in 34, 341 quarters. I'd like to find support found right here and start spooling higher. Yeah, I mean, Top Step is a, is a great company. Uh, I am now partnered with Top Step. Please use my affiliate link. Um, there's kind of an inescapable benefit to trading your own money, though, and that is tax benefits um, and that you can, hold, you can hold things on. And you can also wire the money out the same day, right? No five-day wait time. Just you hit a big day on your own account, just pay me now. And they do, they do. Trade Station pays fast. So uh, I had a, a $10,000 day. Wire me that right now. So that's kind of why I want to start funding my own uh, Trade Station account. All right, no five-day wait time. It's 30-minute wait time. It's the same day. It's wire transfer now. It's I hit a 50-point winner on the micro NASDAQ. Not the micro, but let's say, you know, one day I have a lot of capital, right, with which to trade. I had a $10,000 day on TradeStation. Now let's wire that bitch out right now. <laughs> that would be, yeah, that would be the dream, right? No 10 days, just whoop, gone. All right, TradeStation, let's whoop. Yeah, and get that get that uh, same day bank wire going. That would be the dream. And let's talk about some tax benefits. Uh, some of you outside of the United States are going to be like, "What is he talking about?" Um, I'm a licensed attorney. I'm not a tax specialist, but I have taken income tax. And uh, there are benefits uh, to trading your own futures account. Um, you can take the mark to market election, so take your losses as ordinary, and you can take the futures 64 profit split. You can't do that with a top step. You're going to be traded. Uh, it's all just going to be ordinary income. So there are benefits uh, if you ever get enough capital to trading both. I'd recommend getting funded with top step. Here's my model, and I think it's a good model. You know, work your work your way up to some payouts through top step. And then fund your own trade station, fund your own OANDA, Forex.com, whatever. And trade both. You know, you get you, you you hit enough money, you hit your profit limit on top step, go trade your cash. Right? And that would be two accounts and not twenty copy traded accounts. The good thing about having a company like Top Step around is it gives you the low cost entry basis to build up some capital to go to go trade yourself. For sure. And the name of this business is capital. And you gotta have it. And there's no way around it. So that's what we're trying to do with Top Step here. Um, trying to build up obviously a long term relationship with Top Step. Uh, I'd like to get to life funded. Um, my objective is to uh, be a professional. And yeah, I have to pay for the professional data fees. That's fine. I'll pay it. And, uh, you know, have a long term. I want to have a long term, a long term objective here. For sure. My objective is to trade two, two accounts. At some point, a few months from now, I want to trade a funded account here from Top Step. Uh, which would all be ordinary income, and then I want to trade my own uh, trade station account, and one day have enough money to, uh, you know, not have to rely on anyone or anything. But that being said, I mean, ideally, uh, with proper risk management and being really conservative with things over time, uh, as long as Top Step around is is around. I'll use them for sure. Whether I have a capital, whether I have capital enough to trade my own trade station account or not, uh, I plan on trading top step for sure. For sure. No doubt about that. So with my first uh, payout, if I can get there, let's say it's a grand, it's it's whatever, two grand. Uh, pay off pay off some bills with that first and then the rest of it's going to my trade station account and that'll give me enough to trade uh, micro Russell 
on my on my trade station account again. Trade one contract. Y'all think that's yeah, it is what it is. It's not a lot. But uh, I I can't I don't I don't want to trade intraday margins anymore. I just I don't want to have even give them the opportunity on trade station to shut me out at the end of the day. I do want to be able to hold positions over resettlement and uh, and trade overnight. And the only way I can do that is to have enough capital to do that. So I need six hundred and eighty-two dollars exactly to trade one micro Russell and hold it into the overnight session. Yeah. And it's all small steps, folks. And it's and it starts small. And it takes time. My trade station account's not going from zero now to twenty thousand dollars overnight. But it can be done. We're going to grind and grind and grind, and we're going to treat this as a career. We're going to build a long-term relationship with Top Step um, and show the, show the folks there that, that I'm worthy and I'm skilled enough and talented enough and, and all, those, all that stuff to earn a live prop account and then fund my own uh, trade station account and then really take this professionally, manage my own money. I didn't have the responsibility to manage it when I had it before. I really didn't. I was irresponsible. I was irresponsible, and uh, that's it wasn't Trade Station's fault that I lost it. it wasn't. It's was my own. I take full responsibility for that. It's not Trade Station's fault. It's not the market's fault. You're looking at the culprit. So now we got to build from the ground up, and we've had to completely erase all of our prior retail concepts. Um, we've had to completely erase uh, a lot. You know, everything that we thought about the markets is gone. You know, we thought that this market worked off of chart patterns and Gartley's and all this stuff. And it's a fundamental under misunderstanding of how these markets work. These markets are automated, in my opinion. These are, I'm about to go into the realm of opinion. I trade uh, models developed by a gentleman named Michael Huddleston, who goes by Inner Circle Trader. Uh, he's on YouTube. He's, he's on Twitter. And um, the models are based on inefficiencies, liquidity, intermarket relationships, time, price, and um, seasonal tendencies. I believe that these markets are automated. It is my belief, my opinion, that human beings do not control these markets. I believe that they're wholly controlled by... Uh, trading algorithms. I believe that the trading algorithms uh, in broad strokes can be mastered and that you can trade with them and that they can be more or less within a, a realm of margin of error uh, followed and that with proper risk management and a, and a professional mindset that this can be my career and I don't ever have to go to court again. <laughs> No more court, no more, no more boss, no more, no more ass kissing. That's what I want with my life is freedom. Um, do I believe that I can become wealthier trading, day trading than I can as an attorney? Yes. Is that the primary motivating factor? Yes. The secondary motivating factor is that I don't want a boss. I don't want a boss, and I'm really tired of job interviews, and I'm really tired of putting my resume out there and trying to prove to people that I'm worthy. Um, I don't like ass kissing. I don't like pretending that I like you when I don't like you. I don't like pretending that I agree with your opinions when I don't. I don't want to live the life of an attorney. It sucks. If anybody from the State Bar of Texas ever watches this, I couldn't do it. I don't want to be a litigator. I love the law. 
But litigation will sap the soul out of you. It really will. And I don't want to live that life. I don't want time schedules. I don't want two-week vacations. I've been living that my whole life. Ass kissing. Um, I don't want to, you know, all the job interviews and uh, document after document after document. I love contracts, believe me. Nobody loves contracts more than me. It's not the life I want to live. It sucks, guys. It's terrible. That's what they don't tell you in law school. I mean, they kind of do tell you. The prestige of being an attorney is not worth it, guys. It's not. You, you, when you're practicing in civil litigation, the judge doesn't like you. Opposing counsel sure as hell doesn't like you. Your client doesn't like you. Your wife or husband doesn't like you. And it's nothing. It'll take years off your life. And I'm not doing it. I'd rather put my heart and soul into this. If I want to go travel, I don't want to put in a two weeks notice. No. I love the law. I really do. I think litigation and trial is fascinating. I believe in the United States, I believe in your Seventh Amendment right to a jury trial. My fundamental complaint with our modern legal system is that we've virtually eliminated trial. Trial is a Seventh Amendment right. There's a reason why the founders put it in there. And it wasn't so that we settled everything. So that we had resolution on things. Okay? I believe in trial. Firmly. I don't believe in pleading out everyone. I don't believe in every single civil suit settling. Trial. You have a Seventh Amendment right to it. And the judge is going to pressure you to settle and your attorney's going to settle you uh, pressure you to settle and you don't have enough money to go to trial and you can't pay the fees for a jury trial and you got a right to it you have a right a constitutional right to a jury trial i don't believe in arbitration clauses i really uh i really dislike them they're skirting your 7th amendment Almost every contract that you sign that you don't even realize it's a contract, but your terms and service for everything, including one that I just had to sign, they're all going to have mandatory arbitration. And I don't like it. You have a right to trial. And arbitrating everything is not trial. It's just as fundamental as your Fourth Amendment right, as your First, Second Nobody knows the third. It's quartering soldiers in your home. It's just as fundamental. Your Seventh Amendment right, you don't even know what it is. It is your right to a jury trial in civil suits where the amount in controversy is over $20. And your Seventh Amendment right virtually doesn't exist. Between arbitration and... Between arbitration, which you don't know what that means, but arbitration, mediation, and... Um, Settlement, virtually nothing goes to trial. That's not the American system. That's not the English common law system. We have trial. I really, I really, that's, I, I, I think it's a damn disgrace. If I were ever going to join a lobbyist group, it would be a Seventh Amendment lobbyist group. We've gone too far for system efficiency, and we're sacrificing constitutional rights. You virtually don't have a Seventh Amendment right. It's virtually gone. Every contract you sign is going to be mandatory arbitration. Every bit of the system doesn't want you going to trial. You have a right to it.
And you know what really pissed me off? What really pisses me off about attorneys? Is apathy. Okay, what is apathy? It's carelessness. Most attorneys don't give a shit about you. You, th And you know that too, by the way. You got no choice but to go to an attorney. That's why you have to go. And they don't give a flying fuck about you. It's apathy. It's not caring about the law. It's not trying to be good at what you're doing. It's, it's a lack of passion. It's all over the legal system in this country. It's apathy. And it's along with the erosion of your Seventh Amendment right. It pisses me off to no end. Most clients irritate the hell out of me. But if I believe in you, I will go to the ends of the fucking earth. Don't come to me with some frivolous bullshit, though. I'm not going to believe in that. You got a real case, though? You're really injured? Something happened to you? And it's really wrong? I'm going after him. Like, and I don't give a fuck. I'm hound dog. I'll take off his le left nut. You think I give a shit about anybody? Do you? You're scared to go after somebody? I'll go after him. No problem. I'll sue him under a bridge. I'll take every last... If he injured you and you're my client, I'll take every last penny from him. The settlement? No, no settlement. I'm taking you to trial. We're going all the way, and you're... The apathy in the legal system is a big criticism of mine. And that's why I can't handle it. I can't handle seeing a bunch of fat asses and a bunch of people who don't really care about their clients take money from people. And the clients are fucked up too, guys. Most of your, a lot of your clients come in and they have frivolous suits, they have frivolous claims, and you take them on anyway because you need the money. So your Seventh Amendment is gone. Judge doesn't care about you. Your attorney doesn't care about you. The client is probably stupid as hell. The whole system's fucked up. Everyone is apathetic. It's all numbers now in the legal system as well. And, uh... Go to a law firm day in and day out. Your supervising attorney is tired of you. Your paralegals don't like you. You got to deal with your paralegals who are somehow they got a chip on their shoulder. Like, you're sitting right there. Doesn't matter how nice you are to him or her. That person wants to be an attorney and sees you as a threat for some reason. As though you can't do online law school now, which you can, by the way. But that person wants to be an attorney and for whatever reason that person is not. You know, family reasons or work reasons or just can't get into school whatever but if that person's a paralegal that person wants to be an attorney and is going to view you now as the enemy even though that person is working at the same firm that you are so between your seventh amendment right being absolutely eroded to hell everything is arbitration everything is mediation not how this system was designed the system was designed for trial. That's what we trained in as attorneys to do, is a trial. And between that and the apathy and the frivolous clients, no. I'm, I, I'm pissed about it. I'm really pissed. Your Seventh Amendment is just as important as your, as your First and Second. Your right to your freedom of speech, your right to bear arms, your Fourth Amendment, protection from un uh, unreasonable search and seizure. Your Eighth Amendment, no cruel and unusual punishment. Your Seventh Amendment, look it up. You ever notice that nothing goes to trial anymore? It's contrary to what this country was designed for in our judiciary. And it's a problem. It's a systemic problem. 
It's very bad. Arbitration clauses are a cancer. Mediation and, and arbitration is it's uh, judicial efficiency at the sacrifice of your fundamental rights. You don't even know what I'm talking about. That's how lost you are and how lost we all are. I'm sorry. Just I saw a lot of apathy out there, guys. A lot of attorneys that give a fuck about the client. Because why? Because you see them come in. They come in, new client, new client. you got to make money. It's a business. you got to make money, so you just come in, come in. Most of the claims are kind of frivolous. And, and so you end up treating your clients like you don't care because it's a business. And you get, you get empathy uh, degradation. You stop caring because it's like everybody's a sob story. Everybody's dead. Everybody's cancer. Everybody's injured. You don't know what I'm talking about because unless you've worked in a similar field. It's called empathy decline. Like you see so many sob stories, you stop caring. And it's pervasive. And it's bad. And I can't do a damn thing about any of that. I can't restore your Seventh Amendment right to a fucking jury trial that you have a right to. It's just as fundamental as your right to freedom of speech, which is now gone. You, you virtually don't have it in most walks of life in this country now. You don't have it. Your Fourth Amendment is gone. I don't... I'm sorry. So... This is what I'm called to do in life. Because I can't change the system. I don't have it within me to go for 20 years and be pissed off all the time about what I see. A degradation, a complete dissolution of your right to a jury trial. A right to be tried before a jury of your peers. It's in the Seventh Amendment. And you don't have it. And that's a problem. I'll be back. I'm sorry. I gotta go calm down. Ask me about what I feel about arbitration clauses. Binding arbitration. Ask me what I feel about that.
You know, I've been looking at my audience metrics, and uh, some of you guys are older. Uh, it's all exclusively male, right? Ain't no woman in this center right mind watching this. Uh, and I understand that. Um, but, so, it's 100% male. <laughs> so, uh, I, I don't really have to pretend like there's any women who watch this. I know the statistics. I have the analytics. Um, most of y'all, so most of y'all are my age, uh, but some of y'all are older, and so I'm not really speaking to my older audience. I'm going to speak to my younger audience, like 18 to 24. Get out of the rat race, like before you even get in it. I've worked for companies. I worked for UPS. Uh, I worked for a politician. I worked for a law firm. I've been. I, I have three degrees. I've been through enough school for my entire life, and it ain't worth. Sh you don't want to be a slave. If you have to work, I understand that. You got to make income. I get that. Oh, you, you, I, I can't advise you what to do. Um, so I'm going to go through my disclosures. Uh, first disclosure is going to be SEC, CFTC. I'm not a licensed financial advisor. This is not financial advice. I do not have my securities license. Series 6 or Series, series 7 or Series 66, I think. I uh, don't have it. Um, the following, what you're seeing on your screen is simulated trading. Uh, simulated trading may not represent a real live market conditions, including periods of illiquidity in the market. Do not trade uh, funds that you cannot afford to lose. Uh, legal disclaimer, I am not your attorney. I do not represent you. The following were not my legal opinions. They were my personal opinions, the, the predecessor. Um, I am protected under uh, Texas statute and under U.S. Constitution statutes, so anti-slap, First Amendment of Texas and the U.S. Constitution. Um, I am not soliciting you for legal services. This is not an advertisement to hire me as an attorney. Okay. So we're watching the NASDAQ. I do not represent a law firm. So these opinions are solely held by the speaker, which is me. And I don't want to represent another one ever again. I had enough of it. The whole system pisses me off. It really does. I think our legal system, and probably not for the reasons that you think that I'm saying that. Let's just say that I don't vote Democrat. But it's corrupt. It's bad. Mandatory arbitration all the time. 98% of civil cases settling. 85% of criminal cases pleading. Turning the system into an algorithm. No Seventh Amendment right to a jury trial. I think those are fundamental problems. Um, apathy. Apathy from attorneys, not really apathy from litigators, frivolous lawsuits, so many frivolous lawsuits, baseless claims, attorneys having to make money so they take on clients that don't really have good claims, systemic problems, in my opinion. Unethical attorneys. here looking at a runtime here this video of one hour and 13 minutes
So what I'm probably going to do with this is stop this at an hour and a half. That's kind of been my um, thing. I don't know if y'all want to watch a three hour long video of nothing. So what I will probably do is stop the runtime here and uh, get going on a new recording. It is 2244 New York local time. It's going to be a holiday short day tomorrow. It is July the 4th and um, I'll start up another recording. <laughs>